be able to, <clears throat> excuse me, you should be able to see the uh, lesson plan uh, stuff that's up here. And um, we'll go through and take a look at some things. So uh, let's see, I'll try to make this a little bit bigger because oftentimes sharing screens and things, whatever you're doing at your place uh, might not be as easy to view here. Um, view full screen. There we go. So um, I think fairly often when we're looking at Google Classroom or when we're looking at what we're going to be doing, <clears throat> we might um, take a look at this or we might just go right to classwork and start clicking on this stuff. I want to make sure you know that the lesson plan here, um, this one, if you click on this, that opens up this file. And this file has all lesson plans uh, going back to the first day of class. So everything that we've done is on this file. Uh, I think it's sometimes helpful to be able to just kind of scroll through and see what you got. If you want just the one day's lesson plan, then in the stream, as it goes there, uh, I try to post the lesson plan with all the relevant information um, there. So you can find the stuff that you need there just for that day. Um, what else? Friendly reminders that um, when I'm putting assignments in, um, I, I've been naming assignments starting off with a date that it's assigned and then giving it the uh, a name that I think makes sense for what's going on. Um, most assignments, again, I say the due date is today. Um, if you turn it in tomorrow or the next day, uh, I'm not going to beat you over the head with a stick. I'm, I'm not going to show up at your door knocking, uh, ringing the doorbell saying, hey, what's going on? Those, the, the, the due dates are really just kind of like guidelines. Hey, if, we, if we're able to keep this up day by day by day, then we're not going to have uh, makeup work to worry about. Uh, and, and I think, I try to make sure that each assignment and each bit of work that we do is doable within a day, within uh, a one hour timeline for the day. If you're working on something and uh, it's taken you more than an hour for that day, um, then send me an email uh, or take a look, double check the instructions. Uh, because sometimes there'll be stuff that'll say something like, hey, this problem is optional. Uh, sometimes that happens. And, and uh, we might miss the, this problem is optional and, and you know, kind of work through the, the challenge level problem that uh, isn't a mandatory thing. So, uh, but if you're ever, you know, on like hour five of an assignment, dear Lord, uh, take a break, stop, send me an email. We'll be, it'll be good. So. Um, there's that. Uh, now if we take a look at the lesson plan for today, um, the Google Meet link here, I'm going to end up posting the recording here. And I've generally been going back uh, after the fact. Um, I guess we didn't do a recording on Friday, sure. But I've been trying to go back after the fact and push the, post the recordings in on the lesson plan. And then also uh, I'm posting the recordings uh, here, like if you go to general resources, class videos, um, that is where I'm putting uh, every uh, video from the live sessions that we've had. Uh, last Thursday, the, I broke the, the videos down into like three different sections because um, it ended up being like an hour total or 45 minutes total, but this one is just on the slides. This one is just on the physics classroom polarization stuff. This one is just on the electrostatic force and distance stuff. So that breaks it down a little bit. Um, all right, that's probably enough uh, background chit chat. Um, if we look at the work for today, um, uh, if we look at the work for today, we're gonna um, kind of create a foundation level. Uh, this is as, I was gonna say as basic, but as like, like the, the foundation upon which any discussion of current, electrical current could be based. Um, and then we'll look at uh, a few different things about electrical connections that'll light a light bulb. Um, I don't know how far we'll get through there. Uh, and we'll discuss a little bit about electrical conductors and electrical insulators. And basically we're gonna get there by doing the assignment that's given for today, rather than uh, trying to um, do a separate bit of slides and things like that. We'll just go through today's assignment and that should help you out. 
Um, if you already did today's assignment and you have that thing turned in, um, well, hey, I guess there's four of you. Um, uh, that's all we're going to be doing here. So you can um, take a look and uh, see if this helps you out. Um, and uh, that's about that. If you have already turned that in um, and you did well on it and it wasn't a challenge, well, then, you know, you can hang out with us if you'd like, or if you have other things to do, you can take off. That's fine by me. No, no judgment there. So I'm just going to basically start opening this bugger up and we'll go through her. Um, oh, I'll give you a second to uh, open this up too, if you'd like, uh, then you can kind of go through these uh, at the same time. Um, so there we go. Uh, and this is electric current and electric circuits. So just there, that's this thing that was assigned today, 4-26 electric current and electric circuits. So we're going through that stuff. Um, something is flowing. This first section is something is flowing. We're just describing electrical current. Um, so here we go. Uh, when a circuit works, when we connect wires and batteries or power sources uh, and other elements, when things work, um, charges, usually electrons, are flowing through wires. Um, it's possible to set up circuits where instead of using wires, you use like liquid chemical solutions. I can take that, man. Thanks. Um, and you're going up to Miss Nelson. She should have an email. I'll send her one saying that you're on your way. Um, so, um, where was I going? Oh, uh, so it, it is possible actually to make electric circuits that use the flow of like particles within liquids, like salt water and stuff like that. This is not working. There we go. Now I just got six things. Um, all right. Sorry, folks, I need to just take care of this real quick, like, I know, awkwardness, but my computer is not liking things. There. Okay, uh, thanks for your patience there. Sorry about that little break there. Um, so like I've said three times now, it's possible to set up uh, circuits where uh, you have liquids with maybe like salt water or, or something like that, where you can have liquids moving. And in those things, it can be positive or negative charges that are moving. Um, if you're setting up circuits where you're just using wires, then generally it's the negatively charged electrons that are, that are moving. Uh, and with those negatively charged electrons moving, um, then we get that circuit going, we get light bulbs to light, we get motors to move and spin, uh, heating elements to warm up and stuff like that. Um, something is flowing, charges, uh, usually electrons in, uh, in um, wired circuits. Uh, this is the simulation I couldn't find a link to. It's off of Florida State. I, I used it to put it in here. I used this link a bunch of times. And for some reason today, it's just not working for me. Um, but this is really kind of cool. Um, here we'll go there. Um, come on. We're getting there. I don't know why this keeps popping up. That's annoying. Um, this is awesome. So the idea what this is going to get through is it's kind of like it zooms way in on a metal. Um, so metals uh, are elements or particles or substances that generally have some level of that metal has electrons that are free to move. Like by free to move, I mean not just shake and bake within that atom, but free to move means um, they uh, are possibly able to like leave one atom and go to another atom and leave that atom and go to yet another atom. So um, with metals, with any metal, that tends to be the case that there are some level of electrons, some electrons that are simply free to move from one spot to the next. Um, so these are like pictures of metals. 
uh, off of a periodic table and things. This is like we talked about uh, briefly last week, where if you have metals um, uh, that have protons and neutrons in the nucleus, the electrons then go around in those shells outside. Um, some of these electrons, not all, but some of those electrons are free to move. Um, and uh, some of that depends on the metal that you have, and some of that depends on what you're using to push or to try to make those, motivate those electrons to move. Um, how much motivation or voltage we give those charges to move can maybe make different amounts of electrons move. Um, this model that we're seeing here with these different particles um, is sometimes called like a planetary orbital model. Some people will call it the Bohr model, but um, it's a way that works for us. It's not necessarily the most accurate. Um, there are more accurate models that I think I click on in a second where it starts to look at a cloud where we say, hey, this is the region where these charges are, um, but they're not necessarily right there. And so there it clicks on the cloud. Come on, click on, there you go. And there's a little kind of sphere of stuff. Um, let's see if we can get to the actual. So here, if I pause it, um, it's really blurry on here, but these darker or, or bigger yellow circles are supposed to represent kind of like where the protons and neutrons are. Those don't really move. If you change the number of protons uh, in an atom, then that's actually changing what that substance is and just letting something sit there. That doesn't usually happen. If that happens, then we're talking about a nuclear reaction, nuclear power plants, the sun, nuclear bombs, things like that. Those that's that's not something that just happens for most things if we just let them sit there. Um, so the big yellow parts are the the nucleus with protons and neutrons. They just pretty much sit there. And then on this view, we can kind of see these all of these yellow dots that are just uh, humming and buzzing around. Those uh, are the electrons that are associated with an atom. Uh, and then once we end up uh, turning a switch uh, or connecting a battery or some source of motivation, some source of electric potential or voltage, um, then we'll start to see um, some electrons moving from one side through to the other and leaving. Um, so here the light is off. All electrons stay within their area of an atom. They're not changing position. But once we close the switch and we have things start to move, then we'll start to see some electrons moving from one side to the other. On this simulation, they start to make electrons red, uh, the ones that are moving and leaving one atom and going to another. So we'll start to see a few red electrons. And really, I mean, in real in the real world, they're not colored differently. There's, they're not colored, they just move. Um, but the, they make them red so it's easier for us to see in this simulation. Um, and what we'll see when there's a little bit of current going, we see a few charges moving. And as we turn the current up, we'll see more red charges going. Um, and then as we see more red charges going, we'll see this filament start to light up. So when we talk about current, current is really how many charges go past a certain spot per second. Electric current is how many charges go past a spot per second. That's like, I'm repeating it because that's an important thing. That's like a definition type of thing. That's the foundation level description for current. If we say, hey, we're checking this region right here where the mouse is going back and forth. If we're counting how many electrons go past there per second, that's the current. How many charges per second? Um, so uh, if we have a few charges going by per second, we've got a small amount of current. We can calculate it, the amount of charge divided by the time it took to go through there. So that's a small number amount of current right there. Capital I is current. Change in Q is uh, how many charges go through per region. Change in T, uh, delta T is the time interval. So if we say, hey, I'm going to count for 10 seconds, I'm actually going to count the electrons that go past. So I'd be able to say the amount of charge that goes through on top divided by the amount of time on the bottom. Charge, the amount of charge per second is the current. Um, now I'm being a little bit misleading with when I say counting electrons because electrons or charge is measured in coulombs and one electron does not have a charge of one coulomb. Uh, 
it has it's it's a really scientific notation it's a small number and it's uh i, I don't want that to be a hurdle for us right now uh but so it's the amount of charge per second charge over time uh and uh if we go through with that um is that playing now it doesn't look like it's playing there we go so oh, for pete's sakes um so if we count the charge over time there's the equation we can get the amount of current going through that region or the current through that region per second and now finally uh back to here sorry about uh, that taking that long it's it's uh i was hoping to be able to just play that that video but for the, the simulation so now here do all electrons in an atom move in the direction of current when the bulb lights up so do all electrons go from here to here uh, so we say yes all electrons move yes all electrons move in the direction of current some do bounce backwards every once in a while but overall all electrons move uh, in the direction of current or no when the bulb lights some electrons move in the direction of current some electrons stay there and it's actually it's this last one remember so we had those red ones or we had the red ones that were moving like left to right across the screen but the yellow ones were all just kind of buzzing around the their atom so um we would say some of them stay buzzing around their atom some of them change position um and now this one is asking us to calculate the video shows that we have six coulombs of charge pass through uh this section uh and the wire uh in two seconds so we can just play this this one is uh i believe much shorter um we just see hey there's a bunch of red charges going through from left to right and it says the amount of charge is six the time is two seconds um and the note that six coulombs is a large amount of charge i'm using numbers that will be easier for us to use so that the calculations and things aren't uh, aren't a hurdle um really it would be a, a number much smaller than six but it works for the the concept so if we're saying charge, or pardon me, if we're saying um, current up here, we said current is charge per second. Then down here, if we're gonna calculate it, we would say, hey, current is the charge divided by the time. Six divided by two is three. Um, six coulombs per two seconds is three coulombs per second. And a coulomb per second is the exact same thing as an amp. Uh, I believe if I turn the volume up on this one or maybe the one before, um, it talks about uh, a coulomb per second being an amp. Uh, there we go. Uh, moving on, this is another one. And again, I believe the playing this is just talking about, hey, looking at more charge going or a different amount of charge going. Um, so again, we're gonna try to calculate what is the current through this wire measured in amps. Well, now we have 12 divided by 0.5. So um, if we do 12 divided by 0.5, and we want it in amps, 12 divided by 0.5 should be 24, or 24 amps. So we can type that one in. Next. Um, there are still a few folks in on the call. Hey, good to see you. Um, if anybody has any questions, you can mark them down in the chat and we'll see what we get. Or if you'd rather make them a little bit more anonymous, you can send me an email if you'd like as well. So uh, I am just now kind of moving so that I have two different windows for that so I can see both. So. Uh, both the chat for the Google Meet and my email. There we go. Alrighty. Um, eight minutes or so left in the period. So um, here, this is where we try to find, we're gonna use this FET simulation, which is a, a simulation that we use for making circuits. Um, since uh, we don't have enough lab equipment to send uh, batteries and wires and bulbs home for everybody. Although with an amount of you that are home right now, we maybe would, uh, but uh, we, we haven't. So we're, we're gonna just try using this simulation. 
Um, so uh, open the FET circuit construction simulation using one battery, one bulb, and some wires. Find as many different possible combinations to get a bulb to light up. And now we're talking about different plays, places to uh, make these connections. And then down here, it's a, a, we're asked to figure out which ones of these will actually light up. So it might be helpful to kind of take a look through these to see which ones, which ways work to, to connect. Like we can test all of these things out, right? Um, so, whoopsies, there we go. Um, so, oh, I need to open up the simulation. Come on now. Clicky. And this is a pretty darn good simulation made by folks at the University of Colorado. Loading. We're getting there. Um, once this opens up, it gives us two different things that we can click on to get to start working on things. Uh, I suggest doing the lab, not the intro. The lab gives us just a, a little bit more uh, things that we can do. So here we go. There we go. All right. So move that out of the way. And then I am going to um, just turn off the showing the current thing. That's going to just keep things from getting kind of messy. So on this checkbox here, I just turned off show current. Um, and now I can go over here, grab a battery. I can flip it around to different spots, things like that. Grab a bulb. I can grab wires, as many as we need. And we can also adjust the length of the wires, things like that. So if I'm gonna go here, the first one that it suggests is a battery with the wire leaving the bottom part. And then the bulb, the bottom of the bulb, touching the top, and then this wire also touching that same spot. So I'm going to try to build that circuit. So let's see, they had the bottom of the bulb touching there. Then they had this part there. And then just to make sure things can be seen uh, and the connections aren't, like I don't want, if I go like, the wire right through that way, it's, it's tough to see. So if I go like that, um, <laughs> the battery lights up on fire, but the bulb does not. That doesn't work to light up a bulb. So um, which ones do work to light up the bulb? Well, not that. Uh, here's another one. Oh, and I think, um, I think these options are shuffled. So I think you might have these in different sequences. So I'm picking the first ones that are available for me. They're, they might be in a different order for each of you. Um, so uh, heads up for that. Um, so now if I look at this, uh, this has the side of the bulb touching the top of the battery. So I can click on here and I can do the scissors to disconnect them. And I have the side of the bulb touching the top of the battery and then the bottom of the bulb touching the bottom of the battery so let's see so the bulb's lighting up so now we can stop to think okay so what worked about this one that didn't work about the uh, with the other so if we go through here, I'm just going to try to build both of these so we can see them both side by side. This one there, this one here. Um, so this one lights, this one does not. Okay. So when I'm on this one, I'm going to say, yeah, this one works. I'm lighting that bugger up. Clicky, clicky. Um, all right, and now another choice where we have the side of the bulb touching the top of the battery, the positive terminal, and the bottom of the bulb wired to the side of the bulb. So if we go 
Um, and then we'll bring. Everything's better with sound effects. Sometimes more annoying. Annoying, sometimes better. Um, and then let's see, we had bottom of bulb connected to the side of the bulb. This simulation doesn't let me click on this side. It only lets me attach to this side. So um, like that. And we're not seeing that one light up. So I'm not gonna choose that one. And this one is really the same as what I just did here, right? Uh, here, I, I can't, since I can't, connecting on the top is the same thing as connecting here. So neither of those two work. Then I get to this one. We've got a battery that's upside down, uh, side, of the side of the bulb, touching bottom of the battery. Side of the bulb, come on. Side of the bulb, and then let's see, we had a bottom of the bulb touching that. There we go. And now, and again, I'm just using two wires here so we can see the um, the actual connections. If we had just, if these wires were able to bend, then I would just bend them, but we have to do this. Light, okay. Um, so we're maybe starting to be able to see some things uh, when we're going through these. Um, so when we start to look at what we've got here, the ones that light up, these two light up. We have the side of the bulb touching one part of the battery, and we have the bottom of the bulb touching the other part of the battery. Same thing here. So we have bottom of the bulb touching one side of the battery, the other side of the battery touching the other side of the bulb. So that's what we have for these two. Um, let's see. Oops, I didn't click on that one to say yes, that one can light. Please don't. Um, let's see, I wanna try, like if we go down to this one, we'll build this one here as well. Um, so now we have that and that. And then they had the side of the bulb connecting to the bottom of the bulb. And we see that lights up. So we have the bottom of the bulb connected here, uh, and then the side of the bulb connected there. That's this one. And if we flip the battery upside down, then we can check that one. Um, and with the simulation, it allows us to do that simply by click. And then we can, oops, I don't want to do that. Click on the battery. And then we can just flip. Zoop. There we go. And that still seems to be working. With, with um, what they're called incandescent bulbs, these bulbs with filaments, flipping the battery doesn't make any difference. If you have an LED, it sometimes can. Um, it, it's 11.32, sorry, I'm letting time get away from me. Uh, I'll summarize things here in just a second. So when we're looking at these, what tends to seem to be working is to have the side of the bulb connected to one side of the battery, the bottom of the bulb connected to the other side of the battery. If we have that, then things seem to work. Uh, like I said, it's 11.32. Uh, we're just about, uh, well, we're at the end of our scheduled class time. Some of you have been taken off. That's perfectly fine. You got to go. You got to go. Or if this thing is good and your things make sense, fine by me. Um, um, all right. So I'm going to keep on going just to make sure we have all of this stuff taken care of. And I'm not leaving any questions out there hanging uh, uh, for what we're doing. So 
if you got to go, those of you that are still here, if you have to go, that's fine by me. I take no offense. Um, I'm going to take a sip of tea and we'll keep on going. All right. So on this one now, uh, the question is, um, does this bulb light explain how you know? Um, and um, and again, I think I have these shuffled. Um, but we've actually, we built this one, so we know because we, we built it. But the other thing that is also true is that we have this continuous path. So now if you think about, um, if you think about the mouse, the cursor, as being like your finger and trying to trace stuff out, I can say, hey, if I imagine um, pretend positive charges to be leaving, to being pushed away from this side of the battery, uh, if I have a positive charge, let's just say it's right here. If there's a positive charge right here, I can say that the positive side of the battery is pushing this thing away, is motivating it to go, and I can trace the path, the path for the charge, that positive charge in here, and then uh, it actually then goes here through the filament, and then here. And now it goes to the bottom side of the battery, to the negative terminal of the battery. And this imaginary positive charge goes through the battery. And eventually this imaginary positive charge gets back to the wire and goes through. So if we can trace through a complete path without lifting our finger up off of the page or without taking our cursor and going, doo, 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 right? If we can take our cursor and trace it all the way through or take your finger and trace it all the way through, without leaving the path, then yeah, you're probably gonna have a complete circuit and things will light. So I'm gonna say, yes, the bulbs light. Um, I know because there's a continuous path for current to travel through wires bulb battery, that sounds good. I know because the current can take a lot of different paths to get to the bulb. Yeah, this actually, it only has one path, right? That's, that's the deal where we're saying, hey, I can trace the path without lifting my finger. Multiple paths might work, but it's not a guarantee. Um, I know the current can get to the bulb. It can, but it also needs to be able to get back to the battery. So that just getting to the bulb is not enough. Uh, I know because the current can contact the part of the bulb it needs to contact. Um, that's a bad answer. I don't know. I maybe should just get rid of it. So uh, we've got, yes, the bulb lights because there's that continuous path. I can say it leaves the battery or uh, charges the battery, pushes charges through, they go through the wire, they go through the filament, they get back to the battery and they keep on going around. Again, the battery isn't a source of charge, the battery is the source of motivation for those charges. Um, it's 11.36, so if you have to go, you have to go. I'm okay with it, but I'm gonna keep on going, so this is be gonna be recorded. Um, so now for these things, we're checking, uh, conductors versus insulators. So in this same circuit simulation, we can swap out these different things to test these items and see if they light. Uh, and so it's asking, do they light brighter, less bright, or pardon me, do they light brighter than with the wire? Do they light less bright, um, or pardon me, the same brightness as using the wire, less bright, or they don't light up at all. Um, so we'll go through and we'll do some of those setups. Uh, with those different things. And we're getting pretty close to being done here. Um, let's see. So um, I'm gonna just reload this thing because there's a bunch of junk on there. We pull the battery. Um, wire. Bulb. Wire. So I'm gonna have one that lights up uh, that I'm just always going to have just sitting here. So there's uh, just a regular plain old bulb, always lighting. I'm going to turn off the show current so we don't get distracted by things we don't need right now. Um, and then I'm going to go uh, battery, wire, bulb. And then this is one where we will try putting in uh, the different things that we can test. I'll try bringing this down a little bit. It'll be just thinking uh, our brightness right now is kind of indicated by how long those lines are. So I'm just going to try to um, 
make sure that we can see all of those lines. There, oops, what happened there? Stop that, you go back. And then we'll go, ah, dang it, clicking problems. All right, and then down here is where I will put the different things that we're going to test. So it wants us to test the dollar, the coin, the paper clip, pencil lead, eraser. So, um, and these might be shuffled for you guys. I don't, I don't remember. Um, so I can scroll down here, and we get to these different things. Dollar bill. Oh, doesn't light up at all. Go figure. Paper. Not a great conductor. Does not light up. Not visible to me. Anyway, a coin. Oh, scroll down. I'm going to actually click on this. Trash it. We'll pull out the coin. 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 That's lighting up. Um, if I'm going to look at the size of the rays to, to compare brightness, they look pretty close to the same. Like if I go from here to the top, this top is pretty close to the same as that top. So I'm gonna say that the coin is about the same brightness um, as the regular wire. Lights as bright as when we use the wire. Coin, paper clip. Okay. We'll click on this, get rid of that. And then the paper clip. You can probably make a guess, paper clip, should it light or not light? There you go. Uh, that And again, the lines there look to be about the same. So I'm going to say that that light's uh, equally bright. On to pencil lead. So I'll go here. I'm going to delete the paper clip. Pencil lead. There's pencil. Connect. And it lights. That's a little bit surprising now, right? The pencil lead lights, but not as bright. So um, pencils, the graphite or the, that that uh, graphite in the top, and there's a little bit of clay or something in there. Um, it does conduct electricity, but it's less bright than before. So there's something about that material that allows some charges to move, but it needs more motivation to get more charges to move. And then the eraser, we can uh, you can. Think about if you believe that race eraser would have a lot of charge flowing or little charge flowing. Eraser, test, no light. So we can say eraser does not light up, or at least it's not visible to me. Now again, yours might be in different sequences, but there we go. Next. Gears are going. Um, can, oh, so conductors and insulators. So really what we're talking about here is just, hey, which of these things did allow electricity to go through? Um, and there are a lot of different things that people think about when they think conductors and insulators. Um, the materials that are insulators would be the things that did not. So like the rubber, glass, ceramics, um, plastic, wood, those are insulators. Uh, and really the, the kind of unique thing that people often um, maybe would realize if, if it's pointed out, but maybe don't often think about, is that the things that are good um, temperature or thermal in, uh, insulators are also good uh, electrical insulators for really the same reason. Um, uh, things that are good conductors of electricity are good conductors because they have some electrons that can move from one spot to another, um, from one atom to another. That um, makes them a good conductor. Uh, and that's actually what allows electricity to flow. And that's actually one of the things that allows to, uh, heat to transfer or thermal energy to transfer from one part of an image or an object to another. Um, so uh, let's see if I can zoom in on this a little bit. So this image shows a filament type bulb, often called an incandescent bulb. Um, uh, and there are conductors and insulators all involved here. 
Um, uh, if we design a flashlight with a battery, two wires, a bulb, which parts need to touch uh, the battery or the bulb? Um, what parts of the bulb need to touch a wire that goes to the battery? So um, does the glass need to touch a wire? Well, no, glass is an insulator, no. The metal side needs to touch a wire, right? So if we have a wire going here, then that could touch the battery. Um, and then the metal bottom of the base also needs to touch the battery. Now, if we're looking at this, it says conducting metal here uh, inside the filament, here on the side, and then also on the very bottom, there's a, a conducting spot. But separating the bottom from the side is an insulator. So on this image, this little black part here is an insulator. Electricity does not flow straight from the side to the bottom. Uh, electricity can, can flow through the bottom, through the filament, and then out the side. Like here, it can flow through the bottom, through the filament, and then out the side. Or it can go the other way, in the side, through the filament, out the bottom. That little insulator there in between the bottom and the side prevents it from just taking that shortcut. And uh, I think we're at the end here. Uh, about how much time did this take us? Eh, we were about 45 minutes here. Um, this just helps me keep track so I uh, I can tell if I'm if my estimate on what I'm giving you for work is reasonable. Uh, and then after you're done, you can click submit and check your scores and all that good stuff. So at this point, you should be able to click submit and see what you got. If I hit submit, then I won't be able to double check it again later. So I'm not going to hit submit right now. Uh, one second, I got a class. Uh, so, uh, that should take care of things for you guys. I'm going to hit save or hit the, uh, stop on the recording and we'll have things go through. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. See you guys later.